Hey everyone, and welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and today we are already on day 25. So this is four days past the International Day of Peace, and I can tell you that I'm so thrilled that the conversations are continuing. People want to talk about peace, and this may surprise you, you know. You may think, oh, you know, it's one of those conversations that just seem to take us in circles and we don't get anywhere. But that's actually not true. Because the more that we talk about peace, the more that we are actually opening up the pathways for peace to come from within us and to be expressed outside of us. Once it reaches that outside, we know, of course, everything falls into place because energy is always seeking out other energy just like itself. So the conversations that we are having are collecting other particles of energy, of peace. What does that mean? Energies that have the potential to cultivate peace, to anchor peace in, and of course, to create more opportunities for bringing that peace out of us. Now, why do I keep saying bringing it out of us? Well, because peace is within us. In fact, it is part of our energetic true nature. It's part of our makeup. It is in the same ener energetic wavelength as the umbrella of love. It's the highest vibrational frequency of the creative life force. So what that means is that anything that peace creates, you can be sure is going to be for not only your highest good, but the highest good of all beings and all of creation. It is this one energy that is at work and so as we are reaching into those higher realms, those higher vibrational frequencies, we can be assured that whatever lies ahead of us, actual created, actually created from that energy will be more energy of love. So what else is there? Well, there's joy, there's freedom, there is more creativity, prosperity, abundance, compassion. These are all energies of light. They are filled with light. And so not only do they travel at the speed of light, but what they again create is of light. So one of the things that has come up in these conversations is um, actually what I would like to put our focused energy on today, and I'm calling it peace. You can run, but you cannot hide. And this came to me, it was this realization as I was having this conversation about the fact that peace is always calling to us. Because it's innate within us, we, whether we are consciously aware of it or not, peace is right there. But it requires that we turn towards it. It requires that we take action to align with it in order for us to fully recognize and of course be able to take in and integrate the energy within our systems, which then, of course, we can co-create with. But I started to think also about the ramifications of when we try to hide from the energies that are of our true nature. Now I can tell you that I've had personal experience with that. And so I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. But it was in my um, early 50s where I was experiencing a number of medical issues. And they were things that I could just sort of easily pass off as part of my aging process. And I did for the longest time. And then um, I also had been, I had been experiencing um, these 
for lack of a better term, panic attacks. And they would wake me in the middle of the night and I would wake up in this sweat with my heart beating out of my chest and um, be ripping things apart. And even those, I just sort of ah, pushed aside and said, ah, just recurrent nightmares. But what happened when I started to put all of my focused energy into surrendering to my spirit, my true nature, and giving my life up to it? Miraculously, all of these medical conditions disappeared. Now, I want you to know that some of them had been lingering for years. Constant headaches, constant digestive problems, um, pain, you know, as I was moving about and it seemed like no matter what I did, having difficulty getting up out of chairs, things like that. But all of a sudden, they disappeared. And I mean it, they disappeared like I could do cartwheels across the lawn. That's how completely void I was of any discomfort. I also stopped having those recurrent nightmares, which when I allowed myself to look at them, I realized that they were panic attacks. And it was the catalyst for me to take a look at what had taken place. What was this huge shift? Well, to make a long story short, I had made drastic changes in my life. I let go of all the things that were not in alignment with who I truly was. And so where there were parts that I was, for lack of a better term, pretending to be something or someone else. I just brought all of that energy in and I brought it into this focused commitment to being just me, to staying focused on being a full expression of who I was. Part of that was first in learning who I was. I had to peel back some layers and I'm sure that if you haven't experienced that, you do know people who have. And there are parts of it certainly that are not fun, but the rewards are so great because the sense of freedom is so incredible. What's incredible also is how the universe responds to us. It literally lays itself at our feet. We have access to everything and anything. And so what does this have to do with peace? Well, at the end of the day, what I realized that I had done was that I really had started to love myself in a way that I had never given myself permission to do before. Truly love myself, not according to what other people needed and wanted me to be, not according to what my culture or my religion or my society or even my family expected of me. Just a full expression of who I was. And I remember this peace settling inside of me, even though there was a lot of turmoil outside of me, because as you can imagine, it caused some, caused some, suffering and turmoil for those around me too. But I stayed committed. And I can tell you that it's at that point in my life that miracles started to happen as a natural occurrence. And so what I want to say in this message is that it is our responsibility to constantly be raising our vibrational frequency so that we can align with our true nature. Because when we don't, it wreaks havoc in our lives. It is the basis for unhappiness, for illness, for dis-ease in every dimension. And it also robs us of fulfillment. 
we cannot be joyous or fulfilled in our lives if we are not aligned with our true nature. So I just want to leave that with you and some food for thought for over the weekend. Think about maybe the areas where you're not 100% authentic. You're not really expressing yourself. Maybe where you're shrinking down among other people or situations. And take just one step. One step to free yourself and reach for the peace that's waiting for you there. Remember, you can run, but you cannot hide from your true nature. Your nature, which is a nature of being at peace, at one mint with all that is. And so, I'm going to recite my peace pledge as I have for the past 25 days. And of course, I take it very seriously. And if you haven't gotten your copy or your copy of seven ways to um, cultivate peace in your own lives, please go to heartshiftcoach.com and get them there. But this is my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility for my beliefs, my thoughts, my choices, my actions, and of course, what they create. Constantly being aware of what I am extending from me. And if it needs to be tweaked, heart shifted, I commit to you that I am doing this. And I am able then to take compassionate action in my connection with you and with all others. I take this peace pledge and of course, I pass it from my peaceful heart to yours, the one that I know that is there for you too. Peace begins within. It is where we find it and we extend it out. Peace in, peace out until tomorrow. And I'm leaving you with my blessings of great peace and joy, and love, and freedom, prosperity, and abundance. Peace be unto you. Bye-bye.